If you're tired of failing coding interviews time and time again, you need to watch this video because you're more than likely making these very common coding mistakes. First of all, if you aren't using Python in your coding interviews in the first place, let's fix that because that means you're doing something wrong. Python is an incredible coding language for interviews because not only is it as close to pseudocode as you could possibly get, but it's incredibly simple and efficient so you don't have to worry about that complex syntax and could just worry about solving that problem. Over the last two years, I've personally done what feels like at least 100 OAs or coding interviews in Python. Over that time, I found these seven tricks to automatically level up your code to increase your chances of getting that six-figure job as a software engineer in big tech. So today, not only will I be going over every single one of these, but I will also be showing you either coding interview questions that I got asked personally or interview questions that I would use them in if I encountered them. First, whenever you need both the item and values in a list, if you're not doing it this way, you're doing it wrong. Most people would follow this inefficient method of initializing an index value to zero, looping through each fruit in fruits and incrementing index at each pass. This is less clear, less efficient and more prone to bugs. Instead, you need to be using this one simple line of Python code. By using the enumerate function, not only do you save time by automatically incrementing the count, but you're also making your code cleaner, which is crucial to impress these recruiters. This particular trick is most useful in questions that are similar to the most popular interview question, sum. In the sum problem, you need to return the indices of two numbers that sum up to a target. Using enumerate in this case lets you iterate through the list while keeping track of both the index and the value, which simplifies the process of finding the complement and improves your code readability. Now, you definitely need to know this if you have any hope of passing your coding interviews. Slicing in Python is a powerful and flexible way of extracting a specific portion of a sequence. The general syntax for slicing in Python is this. With slicing, you can extract the sublist or substring by specifying a start and stop like so, or specify a specific starting or stopping index like this. Now this is the most important part. You could define a step element in the slice even supporting negative values. This syntax is incredibly useful whenever you wanna manipulate either a string, a list, or any other sequence. I personally got asked this in one of my OAs with Amazon and it's the reverse string Lico problem. In the reverse string problem, you need to reverse the array of characters in place. Using slicing with a negative step here will make your code way more efficient because it's literally just one line of code. Now that you know slicing though, you need to make sure you are not making this mistake. I personally made this mistake in my interviews and I actually got called out for it. If you have ever been asked to reverse an element such as a list or a string, do not do this. A common approach would be to use this slicing method. While this approach seems to work, it's important to note that it creates a new list, which is not what you want in all scenarios. Not only does this increase memory and runtime, but if you want to make changes to the original list through modifying the reverse list, you cannot do this. Instead, you could take advantage of the built-in reversed function in Python. It is used to reverse the order of elements in any iterable object, such as a list, a string, or a tuple. Most importantly, it's memory efficient because it does not create a new object. It simply provides an iterator to go through each element in the reversed order. If you want to print the new list or modify the old list, you could simply convert the iterator back to a list. This technique is incredibly useful in the common Google interview question, palindrome linked list. Using the reversed function allows you to manipulate these bigger data structures in a memory efficient way. This next coding trick I'm about to show you will help you pass your coding interviews. Many coding questions at FANG and big tech companies involve finding a unique set of values and a lot of interviewees struggle with this. If your first instinct was to use a nested loop, you are completely wrong. Not only is this long and ugly code, but it is completely time inefficient. Keep in mind, interviewers absolutely hate any sort of nested loop for some reason, so avoid them at all costs. Instead, you could simply convert the list type to a set in Python. A set can only contain unique values, so this automatically removes any duplicates from the list. The best part is you could easily convert back to a list type afterwards. I personally used this exact trick in an Amazon interview with the question contains duplicate. With this problem, you simply need to determine whether a list contains any duplicates. Converting the list to a set will remove any potential duplicates. Then all you have to do is compare the lengths and if they're not equal, you know there were duplicates. Now, I regret not knowing this trick before I started my interviews. In almost every single big tech question, either in your OAs or technical interviews, you will need to do something with the dictionary. 
A lot of people will get nervous, panic, or simply they didn't know this trick, and they will end up getting a key error when they try to get values out of the dictionary. This key error occurs when you're trying to get a value from a dictionary that does not exist, but you could use this to prevent that. If you use the dot get method, you could provide a default value just in case that item is not in the dictionary already. For example, if you write this dot get method with a default value of zero, whenever the element you attempt to get from the dictionary does not exist, zero gets returned instead. This will both simplify your code and remove a very common source of error. You will need to use this trick in literally any interview question that involves dictionaries, I promise you. For example, you can look at this very commonly asked meta question, subarray sum equals k. In this question, you need to find the number of continuous subarrays that sum up to a value k. A potential solution involves using a dictionary, and if you use the dot get method, it will prevent any key errors. Now, this trick actually got me my first ever software engineering internship, funnily enough. Whenever you have to write a simple function, such as computing the square of a number, you might be making this mistake. Defining a function is less concise, decreases readability, and is less time efficient. Instead, you could impress in your interview by using a lambda function. Now you can return the square of any number in a function without actually having to leave that function. By implementing this, you're increasing conciseness and readability, making sure you increase your chances of getting that software engineering job. In my final round interview for my first ever software engineering internship, I actually got asked this exact question. In this sort array by parity problem, you need to sort the array such that every single even number shows up before every single odd number. Because I used a lambda function with the sorted function inside, I made my code incredibly concise and stood out as a candidate, so I got hired. Finally, here's one more trick I would use in coding interviews to make my code more clear and efficient. But first, make sure you guys like and subscribe to increase your chances of getting hired as a software engineer. A lot of people will make this very common mistake. Whenever assigning the values from a tuple, they index the tuple using 0, 1, and 2. This can become cumbersome and less intuitive, especially when dealing with larger tuples. Instead, you could use tuple unpacking. With this, we directly assign the elements of the return tuple to separate variables in a single line. This reduces the number of lines in your code, thus making your code more clean, readable, and efficient. I've heard of this question showing up in Meta and Google interviews through the LeetCode problem sort colors. In this problem, you need to sort an array of zeros, ones, and twos. If you use tuple unpacking, it could help simplify the swapping process within your sorting algorithm, making your code more clean and efficient. If you use these seven Python tricks, you're guaranteed to improve your code and increase your chances of landing that dream job as a software engineer. For more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe.